And he now pursues the Hebrews with his chariot forces. Uh, he catches up with them by Etham, uh, a frontier town near the Red Sea. Uh, the Hebrews are unable to turn back because they're now trapped between the war uh, water barrier and the Egyptian forces. Now, this water barrier uh, is possibly not the Red Sea itself, uh, but a shallower body of water that's farther north uh, in the area of Lake Timsa. Uh, this is known as Yam Suf, the Sea of Reeds. Uh, now, this miraculous crossing uh, has a, a very complex record. Uh, for example, in chapter 14, verse 21 to 22, uh, it's a natural event, uh, a miracle that's uh, synchronized uh, by God using natural forces. God drives the sea back. Uh, a strong wind from the east rages all night long and turns the sea into dry land. Then we have uh, what is an absolute miracle, uh, essentially with no other possible explanation. Uh, Moses, uh, in this part of the text, divides the waters. Hebrews go into the sea on dry ground, uh, the waters forming a wall uh, for them on their right and left, after which the waters envelop the Egyptians. Then we have the third uh, the third part of this tale, remember, it's very complex, uh, which is neither water nor miracle. Uh, this is uh, chapter 14, verses 24 to 26. Uh, the Egyptians realize something is wrong, and they get spooked uh, and withdraw. Remember, the Lord is uh, present uh, as a pillar of fire uh, and looks down upon the Egyptian army. Uh, and throws them into a panic. Uh, their chariot wheels, uh, wheels are uh, clogged in the mud. Uh, so they uh, flee in terror. Now the Sea of Reeds is a very, very marshy area. Uh, it's a large body of water, abundant in reeds. But remember, it's much more shallow than the Red Sea. Uh, this is in the eastern Delta region. Uh, this is the possible site. Uh, for this miracle. We're not really sure. It might have also happened at uh, Lake uh, Serboas, uh, which, depending on the tides, is either uh, fresh water, salt water, or a mix. Or uh, it might have happened in these swampy regions known as the Bitter Lakes. We're not certain of the exact location of the miraculous crossing. We just don't know. Remember, this is mythic data. Uh, we cannot be certain uh, of this Hebrew victory and mighty miracle. And remember, there's various traditions involved here. Uh, essentially, a, this is a divine victory rooted in natural phenomena. That becomes the miracle of the parting waters. This miracle is heightened over time. Uh, did Moses work a miracle with his staff and rod? Uh, and uh, did the waters stand up like walls? Or uh, were the shallow uh, waters driven back by a strong east wind? Or did the Egyptians drown or run away? We really just don't know the answer to these questions, and perhaps we never will know. All we know is that the Egyptians uh, don't catch up. The Egyptians lose the battle. They don't catch up, and the Hebrews manage to break away. That's all that we really know. Uh, but at any rate, the theme of the superiority of God's power over the pagan gods and magicians of Egypt uh, is now complete uh, and is told in the biblical text uh, in very skillful, uh, poetic narrative prose. All right, uh, we're up to chapter 15 now, uh, verses 1 through 21. Two songs of praise uh, that celebrate...